What's happening? Ready to drop, Millie? Welcome back, everybody. Well, it's been kind of rainy off and on. We probably had half inch and then another couple tenths and a couple other diff different rains. So it's a little muddy out there. The cows over at Jim's, we can't get to them anymore in the field. So we are going to move them home. As soon as the corrals dry up, we're gonna start sorting the big group of cows, getting things organized for summer group. So that's what's happening today. We might have to grind some hay too, I'm not sure. Mike might be coming this morning. That's what's happening on Ranching Sodak. Oh. Dane's got me hooked on these primes now. I don't know if they're any good for you or not, but I don't think they're too bad for you. As you can see, I shaved my beard off in preparation for the summer. It'll come. As you can see, it's a little muddy out there. It just about gets dried up. Yesterday afternoon, it was just about dried up. And then we had a couple squalls come over and now it's all muddy again. You'll never make it on this incline, girl. We need to move the bunks. Somehow get the bunks out of that mud and get them moved over here to this pasture. That's where these cows are gonna go. And then we'll move these cows today. So those bunks are, that's crop ground there and a frost is gone and it's muddy and uh, we can't get out there anymore. Pull all those bunks out, take them over to our place and then set them up in that pasture, get them on a hill on some sod and then we can still feed. All right, take the two wheel drive tractor off the wagon because couldn't get around anymore. So I got the front wheel assist on the wagon. So you just make more of a mess when you got that on there. This feeder is about empty and I need to get it cleaned out. I need to get it emptied and then these calves will come over to our place. They'll get mixed in with them 37 or 38 of those late calves out of the big herd. See, they got a little bit in the back corner. It's plugged up or I don't know if my boots are tall enough for this project. Freaking mess. Well, no beeps. It's been a couple weeks now, I suppose, since I've had any beeps on the old Merlot. Well, let's get this uh, hay trailer unloaded. We'll go get another load of hay. You guys want to hang out on this pole? I got some leftover hay right up there from the calves. So we'll grab that and uh, load her up. You guys can hang out on this post. The calves are watching us, so I'll let you look at them for a while. Let's unload that and then we'll take this trailer and go get some bunks. So here's the game plan. Uh, this is where we're going to need some help. Hopefully uh, we don't get stuck. I got to get out there with the old Merlot and try to get these bunks. And then we're gonna put them on top of this wagon. I think I can get five on there and then I can carry one. Yeah, it's not good. No word from Mike. We'll go set these up and come back and see what's up. Poor girls, I'm gonna get these guys out of here. Well, we made her over here. This is our place. And uh, usually I put these bunks right on this ridge here. It's kind of destroyed with the machinery and there's not much grass that grows here. But the bad thing is, is this is right where I put it and I got some crap in my way. So I either got to make a decision to get the skid steer out here later 
and move this stuff around, that's probably the best bet. I'll unload these bunks right off to the side and then we'll bring a skid steer or a pickup and we're gonna have to move some of this crap because I do want to keep my bunks up on this ridge that I've already kind of destroyed the grass. Nothing to see here, I'll just unload these. Well, I'll say this about the Merlot, that's the first time I've had to go into some serious mud. The clearance on these telehandlers is one of the, I think they're the tallest one on the market, egg telehandlers. I could be off, but I believe I read that when I was looking at these. So hardly ever bottomed out and I was in some pretty deep ruts and it got pretty sketchy out there. We made her out, never got stuck, never had to use my loader to push me away or nothing. Thumbs up to the Merlot. Let's get these other bunks moved over there. And then if I don't hear nothing from Mike, I guess we'll start mixing up a load of feed. I got enough hay to uh, mix up a couple loads. The sun's come out here now. It's, I think it's dried up enough. We can roll out some CRP hay on these hills. I might be just getting immune to the mud right now. I might be wistful thinking. Wistful thinking. So this is CRP hay baled in August and it's got a lot of the dead stuff in it. I mean, it's green. Definitely there's some good grass in there and it's fairly clean. There's some weeds in here, but uh, I've been giving them a bale of alfalfa every like third day they get a, some alfalfa. They're always hoping for the alfalfa. But leave in the comments what you think about the bale processors. I had a processor and sold it. Especially with rough hay, when you would chew this all up, they would waste more of the, of the rough hay versus when they have to bite it and they have to pull and then they eat all of it. Let me know what you think about the processors. They definitely work great for bedding, I know that. You can cover a big area and get a nice even bed pack. Rolling out hay, I think it takes less fuel, less energy, I think to eat more. We have had three calves out here. The first one was that cow when we first got him. She was sore and acted weird. Then she ended up having a calf the next night of the next day after we got him. And that calf was obviously early. He's okay, but he's not like running around like a happy little camper because I think he was kind of partially preemie. A few days after that, or maybe a short week after that, we had another one go out in the slough. It was frozen and she had one out there. And I still don't know if that calf got, I mean, there was a lot of cattails where it was at, but it was on ice too. So I don't know if that calf died of being cold. It wasn't super cold out, but that was dead. Two nights ago, we had a calf over on the other side of the slough and that one's fine. I looked at him yesterday. Yeah, I don't quite get what this cow that had her calf, that's her. She's still, she's still sore acting. And the calf is not up here. The calf likes to hang out over the hill. Cows are ballerin now once they see the old gray beast. Hay grinder's coming in an hour. Drive through gate, watch out. Have a good shock. We might not get out of here. Had it all mudded up here by the dang gate. We are done eating. You did not see me eat. Dane is not even working because Sierra's coming up. So he's got the romance in the air. He's setting up a campfire out in the pasture. Not sure what that's all about. Need to be building mats, my guy. Turner just headed in the farm over there. So we'll go get to grinding. Let's ride. Well, he's got himself in there. Turner actually got the Merlot going one day. <laughs> Save me.
done. pile's not as big when you use corn stalks because uh, they don't stay so fluffy like the CRP. It gets pretty high but that was uh, it should have been really close to 50 bales. We'll get our bill from him. We'll get the wagon hook fired up and deliver some feed. This video is sponsored by Smith Hay Grinding so I shouldn't have to pay the bill now. 0.7 hours to $245 to grind 45 bales. So do the math on that. Five point something a bale to grind it. That's why I say you want to have your you want to have your bales ready. You want to be able to feed that thing, and you don't want to grind really, really poor, wet slew hay or something dumb like that where it's going to take. Because you'll end up having twelve dollars a bale into grinding it. So you kind of got to be careful on what you grind and make sure it's fast and effective. So we got old Winston on the feeder wagon now. Not nearly as cool to start him up as it is the ferdy fur ferdy he's got a little exhaust pipe though well we're full let's go make some cows happy winston got his name i bought this tractor from bill smith up in uh, foreman north dakota bill's no longer with us bill was a pretty cool guy he did a little bit of everything but he was a farmer raised a lot of hogs but uh, he would he always smoked he smoked quite a bit and uh, we got this tractor and it definitely smelled like uh, cigarettes and that's what he smoked was Winston cigarettes, this red and white pack of Winstons. That's what the tractor got named after Bill. Let's ride.
let's go get uh, the four-wheeler and Kari and we'll move these cows home and then we'll move them bunks around except another load get them fed over there at our place well it turned out to be a pretty nice day right now we've got a little taser wire set up here so they don't run up up into that thing we'll try to shoot them across come down the road shoot them across here and once we get out around the back side of the farm then we're heading across that hay field and crp and then we'll head her home let's go see what we can do get them in the alfalfa field they slow down and eat a little bit Good enough. Really good alfalfa, second cutting alfalfa grass. I haven't been feeding any of this because it was so muddy. Now that it's dried up, I can give them a little bit more. So I'll give these guys about a half of this bale. This bale's like 1,600 pounds. So I'll try to give them half today and they can have half in a day and a half tomorrow or the next day or we can give it to the big cows or whatever. I decided to give it to the this big group of cows across the road because they're complaining.
Well, time to mix another load. Oh, they're happy got out of the mud they're fed you're welcome why didn't you guys herd over here a little nicer i don't think i'm going to give that other group or that big group another load of today we've gotten so far out of whack it's like almost six o'clock and i'm feeding them now so i think i'll feed them right away in the morning get back on an early morning schedule they'll be good to go the next thing is we gotta move those fall calves from gyms get them cleaned out of that lot get them moved over here with these guys Get the feeders pulled out of the mud, get the feeders organized, get some more feed ordered up, get them settled in over here. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks for tuning in. Go have a cheeseburger on me. Peace.